such a man dressed in all too familiar immaculate robes, with a strange voice marked by occasional growls that a boar might make, he is about to cast a spell on a terrified bunny, which he is gripping tightly in his worn and claw-like hands. Your approach startles him, however, causing him to relax his hold. Feeling the pressing fingers slipping from its little body, the bunny manages to break free and quickly disappears into the nearby rabbit hole. The Immaculate eyes you hatefully and yells. Curse you! I've got a few words left in this barren throat of mine, and it took me the damnedest time to get my paws on that long-eared good-for-naught. Elaborate on what? That I have no voice unless I take one, eh? That I am mute unless I make other voices mine? Mine for an infuriate... And what do you care about a dumb deer, you... The Immaculate seems to be rapidly losing his ability to speak. Managing only to growl like a boar in heat. Then he coughs violently and falls completely silent as he mouths torrents of unspoken expletives. His intention is rather hard to misread, though. He'll tear you limb from limb unless you do him that courtesy first.
of the gods of frost. Into the fray once more! What do I spy? Remarkable. A living, breathing something, it seems. You dare to approach me here, mortal? Don't you know who I am? Don't you know what I do? The sister of the king, of course. The phantom of the woods, of course. The mother of all corpses, of course. The ruler of the dead. It is self-evident. I am Cassandra, queen of the phantom forest. And you, you have come where you are not welcome. The only king, Bracchus Rex. He rules all of Rivalon, and I, his double, rule too. 
for a time at least. We were forged together by our very souls, and all that was his was mine, and all that was mine his. But it's no wonder you haven't heard of me. He's gouged me from history one statue, one tablet, one scroll at a time. But make no mistake, I live. Strange, isn't it? Our love greater than the gods themselves can tear you from time. But time matters little to me anymore. No, it floats past me unfelt as light upon a blind eye. To hide his weakness, to conceal his greatest misdeed. My brother was a kind ruler before he became a rabid tyrant, but his descent into madness was swift. Power he gained, and with it, a terrible fear of death that hounded him ceaselessly night and day. He stationed a hundred guards outside his bedchamber and mine, but still he kept awake all night, expecting assassins. He soon determined that he must diminish his risk. I, his sister, forged to his soul, was his greatest liability. My death would spell his, and so he sought to break the bond between us. My brother is a clever sort. Once he sets his mind to a task, it's good as done. Brachus discovered that while we lived, the forge could not be broken. But this did not deter him, no. For Brachus, there are only temporary difficulties. And so he turned me into an immortal creature. Living, yes, but wedded to death. A lich destined to roam, ever half alive among the world of the living. We were lost to one another. We who had walked hand in hand through all of life. We who shared each thought, each trial with perfect understanding between us. I was cast out and aside, and Brachus, empowered by his new freedom, went on to rule. But I've never forgotten his betrayal. No, I've spent centuries searching, seeking, until the perfect solution appeared before me. How better to have guaranteed my brother hated his own cold, cruel heart than to make him feel my torment. I discovered how to restore our soul forge, and I determined to bind our souls once more. The torment of the never-arriving grave would have haunted him as it haunts me. The pain his betrayal caused me would have been his to save her. But in the end, my brother found a worse fate than any I could have devised. Source King that he was. Brachus was stricken down, not once, but twice. First opposed, then resurrected, then defeated once more. I can think of no finer torture for that proud madman than to come to the cusp of glory, only to be cast back down for all time. Is that so? You... A frail mortal laid low the eternal crown of Brachus Rex. How sinfully inglorious. Yes, how humiliating for the so-called Lord of Chaos to find himself run through by a slave to age and order. I do believe thanks are in order. To show my gratitude, I will allow you to roam my woods at your own discretion. This is no mean feat that I swear to tolerate the stench of your living flesh, mortal. Take it as a tremendous honor. Is that so? And how might I weigh the debt of a mortal? Could you do more for me than, say, a boar, a wolf? Does your kind not serve me best when the lovely blush of rot swells along your delicate hide? Still, I do suppose we could come to an agreement. Ahu, the one I love, 
is reluctant to admit that he loves me too. He clings to the past like a fading old man. So I desire to drive him from denial into acceptance. He is a stubborn one, though, that pussycat. And he has mastered the magic I once filled him with better than I had foreseen. That is why I need an ingredient even he cannot resist. An ingredient called Stasis Fern. There is a spirit in this forest called Shiera, who is known to possess like rarities. Alas, she seems to have quite vanished. It's simple, really. Find her, obtain the stasis fern, and the spell you desire shall be yours. It is an anomaly. A plant that is said to have grown in another realm altogether than Rivalon. The first garden, a place of myth and miracle. There, so the spirits of this forest told me, it bloomed and delighted with its fragrance no more. Yet taken from the first garden and brought here, it took on source-like particularities. Its magic is one of permanence. A magic as eternal as the world from whence it came, and with it, what I want will be mine. Oh, my lover forever. Obviously, but that would be a disaster now, wouldn't it? A disaster of such proportions that I'd have to vent my rage on your innards. There is nothing left to discuss, oh frail little thing. Bring me the stasis fern so that I can show this cat one cannot defy, Cassandra. Source Hunter, how glad I am to see you. Tread carefully. Weigh your every word. Sandra has become more devious than I ever dared dream. You hit the nail on the head, Hunter. That is exactly what Cassandra wants to do. Kill the part of me that is cat, and claim for herself that which is human. No! I cannot bear it. I cannot. I am a cat, and always was. I remember my many siblings. My mother giving a suckle, licking me clean with a gentle purr. Yes, I remember the freedom of a pre-conscious existence. That is who I am, not a man. For what is it that humanity has given me? Nothing but suffering. Nothing but hurt and heartbreak. So stop her, Hunter. For the love of the Seven, stop Cassandra. To be human for all time is a fate worse to me than death. Careful, friend, for it'll be your death, not hers. She boasts that the magic she weaves makes her immortal, and I don't doubt the might of her sorcery. Nevertheless, where there is source, source hunters follow. Perhaps there may be a weakness in her fortification still. This forest teems with wretched souls. They may know things we know not. All too well. Even in my human guise, I'd have gone quite as white as I am now at the mere mention of that otherworldly honor. Stasis Fern. In Cassandra's hands, an instrument of ultimate torture. Ambrosia in my own. She'd use it to consolidate my human form everlastingly. You cannot let her have it at any cost. But should you find it, Hunter, please bring it to me instead. With Stasis Fern, that ultimate catnip, I can become the being I most desire to be. A cat once more and forever. You will submit to me. You will take the guise I have given you. Never.
curse the human corpus and curse the human consciousness you've given me. Far happier was I as naught but a carefree cat. Ours was happiness once and can be again. Why would you resist such promise? Because you are no longer a woman worthy of love. It may be your brother's doom, but you are a ghoul beyond redemption. This entire forest is nothing but your avatar, and it sickens me. Perhaps you are meant to be my redemption. Submit to me, and all this horror will vanish. Save your breath, Cassandra. I'll not be swayed by your lies. You were always the only one, Ahu. I need you back, and I shall you back centuries i've seen devoid of a single instance of affection i wonder why everything you touch dies everything you behold withers you are the queen of death and your rule is one of bloody obliteration i am what i was made my pet why judge me by laws that do not pertain to my nature and you you two are what you were made, so accept. Feline is my nature, not human. I'll not allow you to defile my being any further. What just happened? You've slain the demon. Balbareth's reign of anguish is over. The guardians have returned, and oh, how their glory shines. So I do, guardian, and I'll happily make a trade with you.
So we got our hands on stasis fern. Now to decide what to do with it. When the time comes, we should give it to Ahu, so he can become a cat forever, like he wishes. Cassandra is not to be trusted anyway. Indeed. If Ahu wants to be a cat forever, so be it. He is our friend, and we shouldn't leave him in Cassandra's horrid care. You How she leers at me. I can read the depths of madness in her eyes. Gods above, there must be some kind of way out of here. Source Hunter. Words fail me, like they should a mere animal. Consciousness I will never be able to leave behind, but the taint of humanity all the more. Thank you. For every star in the sky, may the divines bless you. Nothing can deny my true self now. I am Cat. Not even your vile magics can change that now. Your petty victory will end in defeat, my dear. I have eternity itself to craft new spells. As have I. No lich will hold sway over my body or soul.
Flesh is the best conductor.
you will submit to me. You will... I've yet to peel the flesh from your face, mortal. Perfect. Oh, darling creature. Perfect. Hand it to me. Yes, that's it. Good. The spell is yours as promised. I care only for this lovely little plant. Now go and leave us be. We'll have need of our privacy. Oh, Ahu, my dearest. I'm coming for you. This is it, my sweet Ahu. Never you'll be a cat no more. No! Away from me, villain! Away! I'll be away from you, my love, never more. Away from me, fiend! No hero are you, no guardian. You are blight upon Rivalon and a plague upon my life. Our business has come to an end. You have served Cassandra, and you live to tell the tale. Now leave me before my hunger trumps my gratitude. I tire already of your tear-contorted face. I gave you the gift of language, you fool. Gave you thought and reason, and yet you sigh and weep. What for? The cat that was, would have died centuries ago. Can what even you, Cassandra, understand the horror of being forced to be what you are not? You were a woman once, not the lich you are now. I, a woman, a mortal. But we, we will be eternal. Our love could be eternal. What's the word, sis? Hunter, you may well be Rivalon's greatest hero. Now we must find my sister and rejoin our souls. I'm certain this entire matter can be healed. Continue your search. You are so close to the end of your journey. You cannot falter now. How might I serve our mission? goes through you, almost as though you aren't there.
enemies have lain a trap.
trap. it correctly. Into the fray once more! correctly. 